Hello everyone, Angelica Dominic here, trainer at Pragmatic Works. Today I'd like to talk to you about a preview feature in the Power BI service known as Dynamic Subscriptions. But before I get started, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button below so that you can stay up to date with all of the videos that we post from all of us here at Pragmatic Works. Now, Dynamic Subscriptions is a feature in the Power BI service that allows you to create personalized PDFs or copies of a Power BI report that you can then send out, distribute to different recipients. So they'll receive a report that is different from the next person based on the respective filters that you apply when setting up that subscription. Now, this feature was previously accomplished. It was available with the use of paginated reports, but I'm happy that they are now available in Power BI. And so we're gonna talk about how to set those up today. And there's a few ways that you can go about this. And I'm gonna demonstrate this just one way. And we're gonna leverage a security table, an existing security table that I already have set up. And so we're gonna incorporate and talk a little bit about dynamic security in doing this. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we begin setting up this these dynamic subscriptions. First, let's talk about the requirements. Now, the first thing that you need is to have a Power BI report that is published, deployed to a premium workspace. So backed by a premium capacity workspace. This can be a Power BI premium, uh, a Microsoft Fabric capacity workspace, and that includes the uh, trial, Fabric trial workspace as well at the time of this recording. So you want to make sure that you are in a premium workspace when you are doing this or else the feature isn't going to be available for you and you're going to be wondering what's going on. Now, the other thing that's super important is that you have build permissions to the semantic model. Remember, semantic model is now the name of Power BI data set. So if you haven't seen that just yet, uh, that is what the semantic model is referencing. So you need to have build permissions to the semantic model, and we're gonna talk about the next steps in setting up this subscription here today. So first, I would like for us to take a look at the report that I'm gonna be using for this. So it's just an AdventureWorks sales report here that has some data showing us our sales by year, by country. We've got a table here with our sales managers and total sales, as well as top 50 products. Now, I already have in this report a security table that, as you can see, you can't see it over here on the right side of my data pane because I have it hidden from the report view so it is not shown to my end users. But you can easily see that table when you go to the data, the formerly known data view, now called the table view, here on the left-hand side, and you can see the table is hidden. Now this table contains a few columns which are gonna come in handy when we set up this subscription. We have the first name of our sales managers, their last name. I also have the subscription subject here, which I'm gonna come back to this and talk more about it once we get into our report inside of the service. Then we also have the sales territory ID, which links back to the sales territory table, and then a UPN column, which stands for user principal name, containing all of these users' email addresses. Now, this is what allows us to set up dynamic security. Now, dynamic security is a process where you can set up security roles, and instead of setting up multiple security roles for each user or for each uh, sales territory region, we can just set up one security role and use leverage the user's credentials. So Power BI is going to recognize who is logged in and only show the data related to that user and that UPN. So, if you are curious in how to set up your security roles, definitely check out my video covering dynamic security. I'll make sure that's linked in the description below. But you can see up here in the modeling tab in our report, you would select manage roles, you would come here, select new, create that role, and then apply the security filter. After you've created your security filter, you always wanna test this. And when you are testing a dynamic security role using user principal name, you must select the role and then you must select other user because you need to enter that user's 
email address. So let's go ahead and test this for one of our users here. I'm going to test this for Amelia Roberts here now. So I'm gonna type in her email address here and then we'll go ahead and select test as. And if this is working the way we expect it, we will only see her data. Now, something to point out here, notice the typo. Her last name is Roberts and here I typed out Roberta. So it is not going to show us the data for her role. So if I select view as here, we wanna go back and test this out, making sure to spell the name correctly. It doesn't matter if it is capitalized or lowercase here, so you could type this, it is not case sensitive, but let's go ahead, click okay. We should see this filter down to the Southeast region, which is the region that Amelia is assigned to. All right, so perfect, let's go ahead and let's check this out from the Power BI service. Now I already have this report deployed here in the service. So let's go ahead and double check our security roles here from the service. You always wanna test your security roles in the service where users are gonna be viewing that report to make sure that they can't see the data that you don't want them to see. So select the ellipses, select security. And then here we can see for that dynamic role, I only have one group assigned. So I have the trainers group here, which contains all of those trainers, which makes it very easy for me to go and add update. Now, the other thing that's very important is the users or user groups that are gonna be assigned to your security roles must also be assigned to the workspace as viewers. So we can go back and double check, but if I select my workspace and I select manage access, I should see that group or the users, the individual users, if I had set it up that way, but we added the group, set to the viewer role. So this means that it's going to respect those row level security filters that we have applied. All right, so let's very quickly test out our roles here again, like we did in the desktop. So we wanna to go to our data set, our semantic model, select security, and then you'll select the ellipses right here next to dynamic to test the role here in the service. So I'm gonna select test as role, and it's gonna take me back to my report, and it says now viewing as dynamic. Well, let's notice here that it's now showing my information. So although I am the admin, it is filtering down and showing me this data associated with my name with that sales territory region. Let's test this as one more user just to double check. We'll test this as Amelia again. So we'll select select person since the dynamic role is already selected. And now I'm going to start typing in her email address, select her name and then click apply. We should only see the Southeast region now and perfect, it's working just as we suspected. And so that's what we wanna see here. And so that's perfect. Now let's go ahead and let's go back to the workspace. Let's select our AdventureWorks sales report and let's begin setting up our subscription here. So the first thing that we're gonna do is select this button here, subscribe to report. All right, so we want to now create this new subscription here for this report. So let's select new subscription and then select the dynamic per recipient option that is currently still in preview. Now, the first step here in setting up this dynamic subscription is that we must go ahead and select the semantic model associated with this report that we want to create the subscription for. For us, it's going to be the AdventureWorks Sales Report All semantic model that I have here. Now I'm going to go ahead and click Next. Now here's where we're going to select the fields that we want to dynamically set this report for. I want to update the following fields. I want to set this dynamically so that I can pull in a column that is going to contain my user's email addresses, the email subject, and allow me to update this very easily and very easily send out this report with just a couple of clicks. So I'm gonna select from the data pane here the security table that I have. And here you can see a preview of that. I have a list of the users that I would like to receive this report daily in their email, not just a link to the report in the service, but also a PDF of that report. So we've got a first name column, a last name column, the subscription subject, which we'll come back to this, the territory ID, as well as their UPN, which is their email address that's going to be used in just a moment. Let's go ahead and click next. 
Now here, the first thing you wanna do is give your subscription a name. You can see AdventureWork Sales is here. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna make this a little bit more specific and name this subscription AdventureWork Sales Daily Updates. So that's what we'll see in the list of our subscriptions to the right. Now here in the recipients section, I want to go ahead and add in the recipients I want to receive this subscription. Now I could go in and manually enter in their email addresses or I could enter in that group, but we also have the ability to leverage data from within our report. So within this semantic model, I have that security table and if I hit enter manually, get data, I can use that security test UPN column, which contains all of my users' email addresses that I want to receive this report. Now on the email subject here, I can go ahead and select enter manually, get data, and I'm gonna select that security test subscription subject column. So now the subscription subject is gonna be dependent upon the user and their user principal name and dependent upon what sales territory region they're assigned to because I've curated special subjects for each one. We should include a message here. I'm just gonna say something simple like, hi team, please review the attached report. That way they know, hey, this is important. I want you looking at this. Now report page here, if we had a multiple pages in this report, this is where we would go to select that. We can include a link to the report in Power BI, so this will take them directly to the Power BI service and viewing the report there. I'm gonna go ahead and include that. Report page preview, I'll also include this here. Now here's where you can choose how you want them to receive the report. Do I want them to receive it as a PDF? Do I want it attached in PowerPoint? I'm gonna leave it set to PDF here. Now, if you had additional file types set up and you had that embedded within a table, you can determine, you can use a column that can determine what file type that would use as well. So let's go ahead and click next here now. And now we're gonna add in the dynamic filters. Now this part is super important. And what we wanna make sure of here is that when we add this filter, we are adding in the filter that is gonna respect the user principal name. And so for us, I'm gonna pull from the security table that I have, which should be at the very end here. And I'm gonna use that security test.upn column. And I wanna make sure that's the value that's being looked at for each. So that's all we have to do. Just one selection here in report field and value because we have that set up so easily. Let's go ahead and click next. Now here's where you're gonna determine how you wanna send this email out on that schedule. Do you want it to send out daily? We did set this up as a daily report, so update. So we can go in here and choose you know, how often we want them to receive this. We probably want them to receive this daily for, let's say we wanna monitor this closely until the end of the next month. And so we can have that there. We can choose the schedule time we want this to go out. I'd like this to go out earlier in the morning. That way they can have this to view when they are first coming in. You would choose the time zone here. I'm gonna leave it set to Eastern. And is this an active subscription? You can deactivate this at any time if you wanna turn it off for some reason. Now let's go ahead here. I'm gonna go ahead and click next. And then you can go in and you can double check your settings here. If you need to edit any of the settings at a particular step, you have the option to do that. It'll take you right back to that step and you can go in and modify as needed. But I'm gonna go back here to the end just double checking our settings here now. Let's click save and close. And you can test this out by clicking send now. I'll go ahead and click this here and let's just check if this works successfully. We should just see the report associated with the region assigned to me as the sales manager responsible for the US Northwest region. Let's go ahead, take a look. All right, and there we have it. We can now see that the report also reflects the row level security that we have in place because we used those columns, that column that we set up for our filter when we chose what data was gonna be exported to this PDF. So it's working inside of the workspace. Row level security is being honored on the report, as well as on the emailed PDF that is going out here to our users. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. A couple of reminders. Make sure that you have this report deployed to a premium capacity workspace, either 
Power BI Premium or one of those Microsoft Fabric Premium spaces if it's a trial or just a Microsoft Fabric Capacity workspace. Make sure that you are the person who has build permissions to that semantic model as well so that you can make sure to set this up inside of that premium workspace. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what else you're looking for in Power BI, what type of demonstrations or what type of features would you like to see explored in my next video. But thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.